Hi, my name's Kai and I'm a recently admitted New York attorney. And if you didn't know already, this is a super short set of videos on my hints, tips, tricks, everything I think you need to know if you're thinking about studying for and writing the New York bar exam. And today I wanted to take some time to discuss with you sort of the admin requirements, like what are you gonna have to provide the Board of Law Examiners if you're, you're committed, you're gonna write this. So with no further ado, I hope you've got your drink. I've certainly got mine, so let's chat. Cool, into these admin requirements. Amazing. So the first thing I would suggest that you do is jump onto the Board of Law Examiner's website. I'm going to call this BOL because everyone calls it BOL. I don't know. Bole. BOL. OK, so jump onto the website and I think it's like the second box down in the little tab at the side. It says create an account or account. Um, so jump on, just create your account. It takes like five or ten minutes. And once you've done it, great, you're good to go. So this will basically be your portal for the whole journey and you'll have all your information and like your New York law exam results will come up there. And yeah, anyway, you're set up. Um, then I would take some time to read through the academic requirements. Again, it's a tab on the side and just get familiar with this, understand it and see what the requirements are going to be for you specifically specifically. If you have any questions or you're unsure or you don't really know what applies to you or what won't, jump on the phone to the Board of Law Examiners. They're really friendly, really supportive, um, and they can give you the tailored advice specific to you of what you're going to need to provide. Um, so yeah, jump on, read that, get familiar with it. Once you've kind of got to grips with that, the things that I had to provide, and I don't know if this is exactly the same, but hopefully it provides some insight. So I had to do a pro bono requirement. So pro bono is basically free legal work where you're supporting someone in the community who would otherwise not have access to legal services for whatever thing. So in the UK, there's things like citizens advice, support through court, who used to be the personal support unit at your university. There'll be various free law projects that you can get involved with. And um, so I would strongly suggest if you're at university, do it now. You've got a little bit more time available. Um, so this is a perfect opportunity to do it. Um, also, basically, like when you join, whatever you join in terms of pro bono, get a little summary. So it'll probably be on the website and they'll tell you exactly what they do as a charity or like a pro, bo pro bono her, pro bono provider. <laughs> um, so it's super, super handy. So take those, take those notes down and like record also the things that you're doing. So how have you added value here? Like what have you learned? What have you done? And hopefully it'll be also a useful record for you to know, like this is what I contributed. Um, so yeah, I would print the form out. And if it's something you're doing at university, once you've done your 50 hours, um, which I think is still the current requirement, get it signed off by the person who is supervising you. Now, a thing that you should also be aware of, I think on the form, it still says that you, you have to have, be, have been supervised by an attorney. So definitely check if there is a solicitor there available who's practicing so that at least they can attach their practicing certificate again. So the Board of Law Examiners can really certify that you have done what you said you did on the form. Um, so pro bono. Um, then you're also going to need to provide a New York State handwriting sample. And this is regardless of whether you're going to like type or handwrite the exam. So again, print out the form from the website, give them the handwriting sample. Um, great. Um, other states also might require that you give other like biometric data. So like you might have to go thumbprint or whatever. Again, that will be state specific. So do check out on whatever website if you're not thinking about New York, but you are writing for another state UB exam or other exam, whatever. Um, then you're going to also have to provide your degree certificate and an academic transcript. So obviously, if you've not already graduated, you're going to have to graduate and get that stuff to provide it to the Board of Law Examiners. I know that in um, in America, like you can also write it before you've graduated. But again, you'll know specifically the requirements for that. And it's definitely worth reaching out to um, like your law school if you're unsure about how to get around that. I wouldn't know. So. Yeah, that will be my guidance point there. Um, but for me, I had to finish my degree and um, provide my academic transcript and everything. So my certificate, I went and got certified and I'll tell you a bit more about that process in a second. Um, but your academic transcript had to come and I think still does have to come direct from your law school to the Board of Law Examiners. So definitely reach out to like, I think it's handy to do it while you're at uni still. Um, just reach out to whoever's going to provide that. So at Sheffield, it was SID or SISID, I don't know, Student Information Services. And just basically give them your BOLE ID, which will be on your account. So copy and paste that over. It's obviously super handy because it links to your account. So that's why I said set up your account first um, and give them the address for the Board of Law Examiners. And yeah, then they can just post that straight over. Do factor in the fact that if you're an international student, it will take a bit more time to get there. Um, so the sooner, the better. Once you've graduated, just get it sent over. Um, so yeah, there was that. And then in terms of notarizing, so I was going to say about all of this. So 
a lot of people ask me about this all the time they're like it costs so much money to get stuff notarized yes it does on the forms it also i think says or certainly did for me that i could get them affirmed as well and it saves so much money so when i was getting all set up i rang up a couple of notaries that were local to me and they basically said it was going to be in the region of 210 pounds which is about 300 us um, for comparison um, so super expensive so i then went to my local solicitor to see what they were charged to affirm uh, so basically like I'd take my ID along with me and sign the paperwork in front of them and they'd say, yes, I saw Kai sign this and affirm that it's true and accurate and whatever. Um, yeah, it costs three pounds. So like five US comparatively for all the documents. So if it's available to you and like it says that you're able to, and if you're not sure, please do ring the board of law examiners to see if you're allowed. Um, but yeah, it's way more cost effective because you're already forking out a lot of money for the board of like law examiner's exam to be admitted so yeah it's a great way to save some cash um but yeah in terms of all of that i would also suggest once the solicitor who's affirming it has signed it just get them to attach their practicing certificate just so the board of law examiners or bowl can basically see on the solicitor's regulatory authority website okay yeah this is a qualified person who's able to actually affirm it um because i would hate for you to then submit it and then like there's a question about whether or not they were admitted and who actually like saw you sign this and whatever so yeah easy way to do it just get the practicing certificate attached and then post off all that information to the board of law examiners um on the website i think there's a super handy box from memory um where i think it's on the faqs page so frequently asked questions um and it tells you when you'll need to have supplied everything by in order to be able to sit for a certain administration so do keep an eye on that if you've got a specific administration in mind that you want to write for um, but as a general rule of thumb, people say leave six months um, clear or whatever to provide all of the information just so that the administrative processes will have completed in time for you writing. Um, so, yeah, those are kind of all of the hints, tips, tricks generally. But, yeah, stay organised, get it done sooner rather than later and just, yeah, be mindful that this is something you're going to have to dedicate some time to. If you've already left law school, obviously it's going to take you a little bit longer to do your pro, like get the pro bono signed off because you're going to have to find the people. Um, but yeah, it's just things that I think you should consider in terms of the admin process, just so you can keep the ball rolling and get there sooner, I guess. Um, but yeah, so I think we're wrapping up for today's coffee sized chat. Hopefully this was really useful and insightful and I've got some plans for my next videos. But obviously, if there's anything that you want me to talk about, do just drop me a DM, whatever. Tell me if it was useful. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this was today's video and I shall catch up with you super soon.